strictly by nine. Okay. Okay, so uh, Matthew, if you want to uh, start by uh, calling the, the next witness. Uh, the next. Council, could, could, could we have sure. the clerk read into the record the eight names that he claims that are speaking tonight? Sure. You just want to match it up by took the names down last time. Okay. Um, one individual who wasn't present, but there was an expression that he did wish to testify, was a Joseph Lee, uh, 88 Burnham Road. Uh, then we have a Donna McNamara, 20 Collis Avenue, La Quinn, I think it's L-A-Y-L-A, -A, 71 Runyon Avenue, Somerset, uh, Dave Nagy, 22 Collis Avenue, Morristown, Michael Dundon, 708 Jersey Avenue, Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, Dan Collins, 40 West Park Place, Don Ginsburg, 38 DeHart Street, and Sergio Barani, 32 to Huck Street. Those are the eight names that I have. So uh, Matt, who's first? Um, I would imagine the individual who um, wasn't able to testify because he had to leave, uh, that was a Joseph Lee. Uh, Mr. Lee, uh, do you uh, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll say God? I do. Would you please uh, state your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the record? Uh, Joseph Lee, L E E, 88 Burnham Road, Marsh Township, New Jersey. Um, Mr. Lee, we're going to give you five minutes, and uh, we got the court. Okay. I'd like to say that I'm a member of the, the Heaven Lakes of Columbus and Marshtown, and our building is two doors down from Jimmy's. Not only is Jimmy a great member of the Knights of Columbus, but he's also a great neighbor to us. And uh, I just can't believe that we're here right now dealing with this, but uh, that's about it. Thank you. Love Jim. Yep. Uh, the next uh, individual is Donna McNamara. Hi, Ms. McNamara. Uh, do you uh, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, I do. Um, would you please state your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the record. Donna McNamara, M-C-N-A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, 20 Collis Avenue in town. Thank you. You have five minutes, Mr. McNamara. Okay. Um, I've actually done a few notes because there is so much here that I could go on and on about. But I, I, I want to be really clear about several points. The first is, that I personally support the concept of jazz in Morristown. Now when I say jazz in Morristown, we know this has not been positioned as a full jazz club. I accept that. But I like jazz. I go to Shanghai Jazz in Madison all the time. Um, I don't personally understand this whole concept of place-to-place -place expansion of licenses. Now I know that's your business to understand it, to understand the regulations. But I'm sitting here and thinking, so somebody just happens to buy a building next door. I mean, does that mean that they apply for an expansion of their license and now they've got an establishment that's twice as big? I don't, you know, I, I, I don't understand this concept. Third, um, I strongly, strongly oppose that this location, be it the Iron Bistro concept now, a month ago it was a Mexican restaurant, you know, that this location be allowed to serve liquor until two o'clock. The area is far too dense. We, over the last couple of years, have gone through this many times. You have gone through the same, looking at this situation several times. We have had problems for years with the results of having this late night at two o'clock drinking and carousing in this area. Our records that we were able to, well actually it wasn't me, I was the benefit of seeing some records that are some public records, and it was only partial records, and it was just, it, it was appalling to me, because Morristown doesn't, in the regular paper, doesn't post what the records are of arrests and things of that sort. And there has been a dramatic, dramatic increase over this last first half of this year. Now, it seems to me, with those kinds of citations for urination, uh, disorderly contact, uh, conduct, uh, 
uh, driving while intoxicated, uh, 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 that there has got to be a cost to this town that isn't being factored in here, with police, with street cleaning, etc. But what I do know, I do know as a resident of this town, it is significantly affecting the quality of life in this town. And I know that it is significantly affecting the reputation of Morristown. Number four, I request very much that the board stay the course as far as the goals of the master plan. The, the points in particular, protecting neighborhoods, contributing to the quality of life. There are specific goals of getting people to live in and near our central business district. Well, how would having to look one more, one more establishment with drinking and carousing to two o'clock, we know the condo neighbors, what they are feeling. What is this gonna be like if these people turn over? I mean, this is totally contrary to what our master plan says, which is try and attract and create neighborhoods downtown. Number four, I am offended. I mean, I, I'm just so offended by some of the misleading implications that there were at the last meeting. I mean, first of all, I say I go to Shanghai Jazz. There was the implication that somehow the closing that was being proposed here was analogous to Shanghai Jazz. Shanghai Jazz has been a very profitable business for 19 years. It is rated as one of the top 100 jazz clubs in the United States. Shanghai Jazz appeals to the more mature audience that IM Bistro is trying to attract. Weekdays, the last service for food and for drinks is 9.30, and the door closes at 10 o'clock. The restaurant closes. It's not last call at 10 o'clock. On the weekends, on Friday and Saturday, 10.45 is the last time you can put in a, a, a order in the restaurant and the doors close. People leave the establishment by 11.30 at night. So in terms of implications, there was somehow this analogy that we should somehow be offended by this, you know, a few seats more that office did and that this was somehow similar. Having a few seats more in an existing establishment that's versus having an expansion and extension of the license to a whole different space. These are not the same. And then most offensive, most offensive was the suggestion that possibly such respected institutions in our town as the Bale Mansion, as Morristown Medical Center, as Mayo Performing Arts were supporters. I'm concerned for what could happen next, what could happen in the future. Business Insider cites that 80% of New York City restaurants, okay, we're not New York City, close within five years. We know that we're even considering this because Zebo closed, because Cups closed. We see the turnover of restaurants. We know that just a couple months ago, this was going to be a Mexican restaurant. So what if this jazz concept doesn't work out? What will we be faced with next? There'll be a liquor license. It could be anything next. I appeal to the board to really stick with your original decision on this space. It was a very reasoned decision. It was a very balanced decision. It was a, a decision we all respected. 11 o'clock, closing time for this location. And I can't help but think that if anything else is decided within hours, Taj Moo is going to be on the door looking for an appeal on their 11 o'clock. That's it. Question, please. Yeah. Were you given notice when the, our neighbor in the office came in to expand the premises? I, I, I don't know why I would. I live in on Collins Avenue. Okay, so you want but to I have been there since because of what you guys were saying. I was like, my God, what has the office done that I don't know? So I did go, I visited, I toured the place, and I understood what it is. They put the top balcony in and, and added some more tables. Are you aware that they doubled their seating capacity? Well, so what? What was their seating capacity to begin with? Are you aware that because of the expansion, they now have 40 beer taps? 
question. What does that have to do with an expansion of a liquor license to another location? Well, they have the same application that we have. They came before this board and it was approved unanimously July 17, 2013 to allow the office to expand their premises. And you didn't oppose that, did you? What time did they close? Excuse me. No, no comments from the audience, please. And I, you know, frankly, I did not oppose that, is that correct? Right, and I still don't. And because I have lived in this town for 25 years. I have been to that establishment. That establishment has been a good, what I'll call, business community contributor as far as I'm concerned. I would hope that that might be the same in this case, but I find it a totally different situation. Are you aware that the office can stay open at 2 o'clock and they advertise on their website that they stay open at 2 a.m.? They have, this is, this is like grandfathering. They have been doing that for like, I don't know, 15 years probably at least, maybe more than that. As opposed to us adding and compounding a situation. We have realized that things have gotten out of hand in Morristown. Okay, we were very, all very enthusiastic at first of bringing young people to town, etc. Okay, it's worked, but it's worked too much. And now we need to take a more balanced position going forward. We cannot compound what is already a serious problem. Is it your understanding? You hear at last meeting when I represented to the board that the existing approved occupancy of the iron bar, which is 1043, with our upgrade to the front of the building, will remain the same. Yes, I get that. Space. Yes, I get that. All right, so now your concern is that we're going to bring more and <laughs> we're going to exacerbate conditions if we have the exact same people that we're permitted to have now, and we just spread them out over another 4,000 square Well, if feet, I understand your concept right, right, it will not be the Please same Please don't people. interrupt me, would you let me finish? Okay. If we have the exact number of people just spread out over a larger area, how do you feel that will, will exacerbate the condition? Okay, what I understood your concept to be is your concept is not to have the same people. I've seen the videos. I know exactly who your clientele is. I live in town. I walk the street. I see them outside the bar. I see them inside the bar. You are saying that you want an establishment with a different clientele. You are saying this new target population is going to be 35 to 55. The way I do the math, that means there's going to be less of the 2 o'clock drinking crew. Would that be a benefit to you? that there would be less of the drinking so that you would be in favor of this happening. Not to 2 o'clock. Not in another location, not in another physical space. So You'll have to work out for yourself whether you cram them all into the first space or whether or not you will expand them and have a new concept and a contribution to our town of a new establishment geared toward a different population that does have earlier hours but adds diversity to the mix of what we have. You'll have to decide that. So your position would be that the 35 to 55 group should not be allowed to stay in the establishment at 2 a.m. like everybody else in that area? I 100% I know that in this locale, there is no large population in that age group that is looking for jazz at an upscale restaurant that feels a need and wants to go to 2 o'clock. And I guarantee you, just look at something that's even more of a jazz club. I mean, you're basically positioning it as a bar. You say it's a jazz bar. Look at what the success has been for 19 years of one of the best in the country, jazz establishments, closing at closing the door, walking out onto the street at 10 o'clock on the weekdays, and before midnight, closing that door at 11.30 on the weekends. And they have no problem, and there wouldn't be no problem. I don't have a question to ask. Quinn Lake. What is that? La Quinn, L A Y, uh, 71 Runyon Avenue in Somerset, New Jersey. He's one of my guys who's not here yet. I don't okay. show. Uh, the next is uh, Dave Nagy. Hello, Mr. Nagy, could you stay here in the address? 
David Nagy, 22 Collis Avenue, Morristown, New Jersey. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Nagy, um, would you, uh, do you swear to the whole truth and nothing but the truth all the time? I do. Um, would you uh, say your first name, spell your last name, and David, your address? David Nagy, N H E Y, 22 Collis Avenue, Morristown. You have five minutes, sir. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you all for, for the, 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 the very difficult job that you do. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, can be thankless at times, and, and no matter what decision you guys make, you're going to get cheers from one side and cheers from the other. So I just wanted to say, you know, I think I can speak to a lot of people when I say that we appreciate what you do. So, so thank you for that. Um, number two, I want to, I want to uh, give kudos to the Iron Bar legal team, the PR team, uh, architecture team. They've done a wonderful job. It's a, it looks like a beautiful place, and it would, it would be a real asset to this town. And uh, I think they've done a great job. So, so you know, good job, very nice job. Uh, jazz, jazz club in Morristown would be great. Okay. Um, the, the, the problem I have with with this whole concept is is the open, you know staying open until two o'clock. Now, um, I, I want to stress that the, the, I want I want to concentrate on the 1,043 number that their attorney has mentioned several times last meeting and, and, and again tonight. Um, when I first heard that, I thought, wow, that's a, that's a huge number. Where did that number come from? And I know the iron bars, current capacity today is 200, uh, and then there's another 600 in the basement. So that's 800. Where's, where's the other 243? I'm assuming it comes from the Grand Cantina. So if you add up 200 plus 600 plus 243, you get 1,043. Um, and I had a question as to what, uh, so when you're standing on South Street outside the Iron Bar, you're hearing noise from 200 people. The 600 people are in the basement. You're not hearing them. Their noise is muffled. What you're hearing is 200 drinkers at street level. With this app, the approval of this application will move most of those 600 people. And I had a, I had a question, I didn't know if this was true, but the, the attorney confirmed it tonight. They're going to spread those people out to street level. So, so you're going to go from 200 at street level to 1,043. That's a 500% increase. All right. So, when you consider this application, please don't look at the jazz flow because that's just that's kind of like well, it's not a spokesman, but it, the, the, the 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 golden goose here, the cash cow, is the liquor license until two o'clock in the morning. If, if you're able to serve 1,043 people liquor to 2 o'clock in the morning, that's a lot of money to be made. And that's the real goal here. Uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the jazz club, as, as, as much as I love jazz, like Donna, it, it's really lipstick on a pig. The, 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 real, the, the real goal is, is, the, is the liquor license and, and serving liquor till 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, uh, it, you know, the, the noise that happens up into, up into and including 11 o'clock is very different than what happens after 11 o'clock. I think everybody can agree on that from both sides. I mean, it get, you know, when people start drinking, it gets louder and louder and louder. We all know that that's to be the case. I'm guilty of it. I'm sure most people in this room are guilty of it. Once you start drinking, you get loud and, and things happen. So we, 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 we've seen the police reports of what happens when, when when young people, not just young people, older people too, you know, 55 year olds can make just as much noise as 35 year olds. It's not, it's not a, it's not an age thing. So the fact that you're bringing in, you know, 35 year old, uh, uh, 55 year olds isn't going to, isn't going to decrease the, the amount of noise. Um, so, so the 1,043. Okay, you're moving them up to street level, spreading them across. You're, you're, you're basically adding, you know, probably three or four more bars. If you look at some of the accounts of the other bars in the, in the neighborhood, you know, Roots has 277. The Urban Table, 150. The Office, 140. Sona, 13, 463. Which, by the way, is where a lot of the problems are because it's such a big bar. Um, Tajmu, 69. Uh, Grasshopper, up the green, 225. Dark Horse, 308. Double Pub, 124. So you get the picture. You, you got 1,043 1, compared to these other bars. That's a big, that's a lot of extra people on South Street at night. Um, I, I, I'm not sure we can afford to have our only street in town become Bourbon Street, because that's where we're headed. 
Um, I like to honor, I, I would totally supportive of the development that, that, that you guys have allowed to happen in town. I think you've done a good job, but we need to put the brakes on now because, yeah, we've attracted a lot of young people. And I can just imagine what young people are, are think when they hear us old fogies talk about this. They must roll their eyes and say, you know, give us a break. But really, our downtown's for everybody, not just young people, not just bar owners. It's for all of us. And if we, and if, if those neighbors that live in town cannot visit the downtown area, you've done a disservice to the town, right? And that property value is going to plummet. Is that what we want? I don't think so. I think everybody wants those properties to remain attractive to everybody, right? You don't, you don't want people coming in from out of town and observing a Bourbon Street uh, uh, type of situation when, when they come to town. They're not, they're not going to spend a million plus dollars on a condo to live on Bourbon Street. So I would just, I would ask you to consider the neighbor, the neighbors that live in that building, consider their views. They're on the front lines of this. They have to live with this every single day. So I would, I would, I would really pay attention to what they have to say. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm not gonna answer your questions either. I didn't come here to be cross-examined. I don't know how this started. But I made my case. If you have anything to say, tell it to the council. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would be, uh, this is Ms. Chairman, council, I think it's only appropriate that everything he said be stricken. He's not complying by the rules. It's absurd that he would up here and make statements, some which are totally inaccurate. I never said that we were going to take 1,043 and spread it on the first floor. That's absolutely absurd, not realistic. Mr. Webster asked me last month, how would you divide up the 1043 that you're allowed to have? And I responded that we would put 235 and 808. So everything he just said, uh, I thank him for his compliments on the presentation, but if he isn't going to play by the rules, that testimony should be stricken. Uh, Council, uh, the rules require Mr. Williams to cross examine witnesses to present testimony. Uh, if Mr. Nagy is not going to present himself for cross examination, I'm going to have to instruct you to, to strike the testimony he's produced. I think Mr. Nagy has reconsidered. Round, round two. <laughs> How about it? <laughs> Mr. Nagy, you made a statement to the board, and I just clarified it that the 1043, which we would be entitled to have on the existing iron bar, would be broken down to 808 in the existing iron bar, and 235. Not, not as you expressed the board that you were concerned that the first floor would be 1045, uh, 1043. Is 600 in the basement right now? There's 600 approximately in the basement, and the rest would be upstairs or, or merged, but you have to understand- The iron bar right now is 200 upstairs, 600 as we stand here today the occupancy is roughly 800 right 200 up 600 down but that has already been acknowledged that it will be changing the 1043 as a result of the upgrade to right. the facility my, my only point let me finish so whether this board acts tonight or not going into the fall the iron bar will have an occupancy of 1043 now all we're saying is that we'll take the 1043, which we're permitted to have by law, build the restaurant and spread the entire 1043. That's exactly what I said. No, you didn't. You said we were going to spread it on the first floor. We're not doing it on the first floor. Oh, so but above ground, above street level. Street level. Never above. said that. Street it's level. Going, it's going to be 808 on the existing iron bar, which will be the first floor in the basement, and 235 in the restaurant. So the total number of people that will be allowed to come into this facility in the fall will be exactly the same if the board approves. So, you, so, you're, so what you're saying is you're keeping those 600 people in the basement. <laughs> is that what you're saying? What I'm saying to you is that the iron bar will have 808s. If you want to allocate six for no, the answer, bar, my, answer my question. Is, uh, I, I don't don't either, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't, I don't know if I, I'm able but to cross examine. What I'm saying is not adding any people. But, but the six, my point was that the 600 are in the basement, not at street level. That's correct. Right. And that noise, you can't hear from street level. Right. So if you move any of those people up, you're going to hear those people. But we're not moving the people up. Well, I just asked you if you're going to leave them in the basement. You, you didn't answer me. 
the, the basement where we may know them. Whatever the occupancy will be 600, right. give or take. But, but where are those so people going to go? Are they going to go in the basement or are they going to go where the sunlight is? Well, there's going to be 1043 either way. Do you grasp that, sir? Can I do, you, yeah. You've said it a million times. Yeah. If you put 600 downstairs, how many are left upstairs? 443, correct? Right. Yeah. 235 will be on one side, the balance will be on the other side, 208. So we're taking the exact number of people and just giving them more area to... to no, but it's, it, it also sounds, and that's the question I had, it also sounds like you're moving... But we're not. And just I want you to be... I want you well, to you that. didn't say that. You didn't say... You said that since day one. We so, all right, so, so the total... So do you feel better let, now? Let, let, let's, let, let's let one person speak. Do you time. feel better now that you know that the 1043 are not going to be on the first floor? I don't, I'm not sure what you're saying. I, you know, I only try yeah, to, I'll try I, to... I'll ask, I'll ask you a point-blank question. Are those 600 people, of the 1,043, are the 600 people going to remain in the basement? Correct. Yes, they are. Yes. Does that make you feel better? And how's that, how's that enforced? Wait a second. I mean, you were concerned that they were coming upstairs. We're telling you they're going to be in the basement. Does that make you feel better? Well, you're still adding, you're still adding another 243. We are not adding them. We're telling you that our occupancy is 1043. Okay, all right, but, but that 243 of the Grand Cantina was an 11 o'clock approval. First of all, the Grand Cantina was much smaller than the space that we're occupying now. It's a whole different application. Right, but what you've done is you, you they, they approved the Grand Cantina application for 243 Mr. to 11 o'clock p.m. Let me help, let me try to help out here. Yes. Mr. Williams, can you explain um, how you're going from 800 approximately now to 1043 in the fall? There'll be an upgrade which is already part of your package. We received a permit to upgrade the front of the building, which will give us an increased occupancy of 1043. So the and identical space that you occupy now, with the modifications to the, to the to exterior of the building, the doors in particular, will allow you to buy fire code to go from 800 and some change to 1043. That's correct. So there, it's, it doesn't include the Grand Cantina. It's not. It doesn't include any additional space. It is the exact same box that you occupy. The exact now. same area that we have today will go to 1043. What we did is an overture to the board and to the public to say, although we have 1043, we will not bring one more person to this site. That's all we're doing is giving a little diversity in the type of entertainment and the, the facility that we have. We would have the iron bars exist today with the iron bistro adjoining it, the same amount of people. Mr. Williams, do you have any more questions for Mr. Nagel? Did you oppose the application that was before the board last year for the office? Didn't know about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Witnesses, uh, Michael Dundon. Mr. Dundon, thank you for coming. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be done. I do. Um, would you um, state your first name, spell your last name, and give your address for the record? Sure. Uh, Michael Dundon, D U N D O N 708, Jersey Avenue, Jersey City. Uh, you have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, I am the audience development manager at the Mayo Performing Arts Center. I report to Allison Lorena, president and CEO, as well as the board of trustees at the theater. My responsibilities include overseeing the box office, group sales, and development of new audiences. I have been with MPAC for six years. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is a proud member of the Morristown community. We present over 200 events on our stage annually, with a total audience of over 200,000 among all our programs, which includes concerts, educational programs, as well as outreach events. We hope that our presence in town brings the arts experience to all citizens of Morristown and the surrounding area. And we are proud that our economic impact on the region is in excess of $14 million. The performing and visual arts add to the rich cultural fabric of the community. They also help to make Morristown a popular destination to visit and a great place to live and raise a family. MPAC's Board of uh, Trustees and Management 
have taken no position on the question at hand, and we do not have enough as we do not have enough information about this project and its potential impact. We also did not formally endorse the inclusion of MPAC in the promotional video that was presented to the council at the June hearing. While we embrace the growth of artistic offerings in our community, we will fully support the town council and its decision on the issues being discussed tonight. Thank you very much. Obviously, the key issue is whether or not this uh, proposed iron bistro should be allowed to stay in past 11 o'clock. And I'm not sure if any what standards of proof of need the board actually requires, but what I think we've seen and heard from the applicants at this point provides very little, very little, in terms of making a case to stay open beyond 11 o'clock. In the last hearing, we heard uh, witnesses, which included a musician, who, by the way, I recall had to be reminded to take his uh, parade off during the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, and of course, as would be expected, he supported this proposal because he gives him one more opportunity at a paying gig, but frankly, that's not our concern. Uh, there was also something in the, uh, uh, the Marstown Green website today from yet another musician with the same opinion, but that's also to be expected. We also heard uh, from another gentleman who described himself as an anthropologist uh, and actually, I looked up his LinkedIn bio, where he says he's a photographer slash anthropologist. And I'm astounded that with that background, he provided what we were supposed to accept as expert testimony about the Iron Bistro's marketing plan, which is a little shocking. I've personally been an expert witness in about 2,000 hearings countrywide, and in each one of them, I had to explain my qualifications quite carefully and have them accepted by the board. This board didn't do that. And in fact, not only did we hear uh, the qualification, no qualifications about marketing, but the one thing I recall him saying of some substance was, young people like to go out, like to drink, and like to stay out late, which is an expert opinion that we probably could get from any human on the street outside. <laughs> uh, but then again, the marketing marketing plan for the piece was frankly not our concern either. Then we heard from the master chef sitting to my right here, whose familiarity with Morristown apparently doesn't extend 80 feet across the street from the Iron Bistro, where in the Origin restaurant, since it's been open, which is many years now, you can get wild boar on their regular menu. Um, he also said you can't get a decent glass of wine in town, and let's assume about 100 feet to the right of the Iron Bar as you face it is Roots, with 500 bottles of very fine wine, but maybe that's not sufficient for some people. But once again, whether he knows about Morristown or whether he's got a good idea here is not our interest. The chef also described the great need for a jazz club slash restaurant here in Morristown. And you've heard from people in the audience, multiple people, about the Shanghai Jazz Club over in Madison, which is all at 4.2 miles away. It's a 15 minute car ride. Uh, and that's not to mention the Mayo Center, from whom you just heard another witness. Uh, and he didn't mention this, but I get Mayo Center emails all the time and, and uh, advertisements on the web that say that they actually feature frequently jazz performances. And in the news today, or maybe yesterday, the Hibiscus Restaurant, just a little further down South Street, has announced that it's going to have jazz performances four nights a week. And guess what the closing time is? 10 o'clock. That's the latest closing time. Some nights 9.30, two nights I think 10 o'clock. But once again, the Bistro's competition is frankly not my interest or our interest. And then there was a slide presentation, which all things considered has to be honestly described as content free, except, uh, of course, for suggesting support for uh, the proposal by the Marstown Hospital folks, the Mayo Performing Arts Center, and the good folks over at Vail Mansion, where I used to live, and all of those sources have said they were misrepresented, which uh, is a wake up call to us if you're paying attention. It's a wake up call to say, can we trust anything that's been said here in support? of the application or about the application. 
uh, frankly, there's a trust issue here. One of the claims uh, also made about the marketing idea, by the way, is that hospital workers, after a long shift, would like nothing more than to go to a jazz club and stay out late. Uh, and frankly, that's not the hospital workers I know, some of whom are in the room here, uh, who pretty much want to go home and get some sleep. And the same is probably true of the middle-aged clientele that's the target population for this jazz club, uh, who presumably, and this was stated, that after seeing a show over at the Mayo Center, for example, uh, they would like nothing better than to extend their late evening in a jazz club, uh, because I guess a full show at the Mayo Center, which usually gets out at about 11, isn't enough entertainment for middle-aged people. I used to live in the Mail Mansion, by the way, right next to the theater. When that theater show ends, swarms of people come out the front door, head for their cars, and go home. All right? They don't walk, and I've been out late at night often, they don't walk to like the nearest 24-hour uh, open <coughs> bar, or the bars that were open after 11 o'clock. They basically were in cars, gone. And I think that's just one more element of sort of the arm waving that we've seen and heard here. Uh, but then again, whether the marketing plan works or doesn't work is not the key issue at the moment. The key issue is you let them stay open in what ultimately might just be another bar, and another really large bar, until 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I actually went and spent some time reading the Alcoholic Beverage Control Handbook issued by the state, the one that's actually intended for the municipalities, you folks. Uh, and it says there are multiple, multiple times that municipal boards like yourselves serving as an ABC have to consider the quality of life and the local community's interests. And while there's an interest here in, of course, balancing the, the desires of the applicant with the community, uh, it's funny that they actually, that handbook mentions interest of the community many more times than it does the interest of the applicant. Uh, and people drinking until 2 o'clock, and we have enough of them in town. And the issue here is, do you really need more? It was pointed out by uh, Dr. Roseanne in the first meeting that traffic accidents, especially drinking-related traffic accidents, go right through the roof at 11 o'clock, and they do. And in fact, until uh, probably the end of June this year, about a six-month period, in that six-month period, there were 27 DUI arrests in Morristown. Mr. Collins, we 19 of them occurred after 11 o'clock. Mr. Collins, we we're going to ask you to begin to wind down. You've exceeded the five minutes. Very close. Thank you. I'm going to read to you in terms of the board's consistent decision making, or at least it should be consistent, uh, your own words on the denial of the Hart Street uh, license transfer a little while ago. It says, whereas the town council finds based on various testimony heard that it's in the best interest of the town of Morristown to deny the request for a place-to-place -place transfer of the instant license for the following reasons. I'm only going to read the first paragraph of the following reasons, which is the addition of another liquor establishment in this area would exacerbate the quality of life issues that exist in the neighborhood, including but not limited to parking congestion, noise issues, that's already been discussed here. Garbage, which is a key issue here too. Sanitation issues, issues with public urination, and other body bodily fluids. If you're going to be consistent, you have to deny this application too for the two o'clock issue. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Uh, Mr. Wood, do you have a question? For yes, uh, you seem to be very familiar with the area and the establishments that uh, are presently operating on South Street. Can you name one establishment on South Street or anywhere in the township of Morristown that has a restriction that they have to stop selling liquor at 11 o'clock? No, and I didn't claim to be familiar with the whole area. I just was familiar with two things that you folks weren't. Are you aware that no one in the township of Morristown has a restriction that they have to close at 11 o'clock that presently operates a business? Actually, you do, don't you? We, I said presently operates a business. Okay, well... No, but okay. you guys will. Now, when you did you receive notice for the office expansion? You know I did. And did you go to the hearing? No, and I also supported the office expansion. Do you want to know why? Uh, I didn't ask you the question. Why? The office presently has the ability to operate at 2 a.m. Is that your understanding? Yeah, I believe so. And you know what? You the office, no to that the office, I'd like to answer this question, please. I asked you a question, you answered it. I'm going to follow up with another question. I'd like question. to continue the answer to my question, please. You have not finished the answer to your question. I don't think you were able to finish the answer to your question. 
the office has been around for about 25 years. Their expansion was in exactly the same footprint as what they had before. The office, as long as I've lived in Morristown, which is now 20 plus years, has never been a source of being a bad neighbor. The garbage in the plaza area, the piazza behind them, is well contained and not out in the open like the, the Iron Bars is. <clears throat> the reports of drunken, disorderly fights and things in this town, in my, at least my reading, have never been associated with the office. On the other hand, in the short time, relatively short time the Iron Bar has been here, they haven't exactly been a good neighbor and there's been an awful lot of rowdy, rowdiness. There's more noise in town. I live on the seventh floor of a building behind the, the, the bars and above where the plots, piazza is. It's a heck of a thing when you can't keep your windows open because the noise at two o'clock from rowdy revelers still, you know, come, heading to their cars drunk is an issue. And it's not gonna get any better with an additional 200 or so people drinking. Understand that the office can stay open at two o'clock. Roots can stay open at two o'clock. Slum at thirteen can stay open at two o'clock. And now you are attributing all these problems to just the one bar, the iron bar. A thousand and twenty some odd people, is it, or forty people? It's an awful lot of drinkers. Well, we've indicated to the board. Maybe you didn't listen that we don't have a thousand forty-three as we sit here tonight. Your, nor have we had it over the past year and a half that we've operated. Our capacity was just over eight hundred. So. That, that oh, 800 is a much smaller number, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't object to the office expanding your premises uh, because you said they were within your same footprint? Uh, that was one of the reasons. Okay. The bigger reason is the office has been a good neighbor and doesn't well, seem to push trouble. You look at the uh, municipal handbook, maybe you should check that if they were within the same footprint, they would not have had to appear before this board. This board has jurisdiction on place-to-place -place transfers for expansion of premises. So if they were staying within their same footprint, they would not have had to appear here. So your your statement is inaccurate. Uh, I my my statement about whether or not I supported the office's expansion of capacity had nothing to do with whether they showed up here at this board. But I, I didn't attend the hearing. I supported the office because, Mr. frankly, Mr. they're Mr. not a bad neighbor. Mr. Williams, do you have any questions? No, I have no, I say no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don Ginsburg. Mr. Ginsburg, Mr. Ginsburg, how are you? Good. Uh, do you uh, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, Mr. Ginsburg, would you state your first name and spell your last name for the record? Give your address as well. Donald Ginsberg, G I N S B E R G, 38 to Hart Street, in town. And you have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the things that have been said before to, to try and save a little bit of time. Um, I should start by saying I am a supporter of a jazz club and a jazz restaurant, and I'd like nothing better to see additional entertainment that will help to make this town better in place. Um, Unfortunately, my opinion is that this particular um, application in the form that has been put forward is not really going to contribute to the town and will only continue to make it uh, worse as far as the number of incidences in the, in the area and uh, to continue to make the reputation of this town worse by having additional bars in place. I do have a couple of questions to ask. Uh, one was that prior to this, um, a permit was granted for the Mexican Cantina, um, and it was agreed that 11 o'clock was an acceptable time for a restaurant to be closed and still be able to conduct business. I'm really curious what in essence has changed if this is truly a restaurant and not focusing only on the bar to make an 11 o'clock closing untenable and not really consistent with what you're looking for. Is that a question you can answer, sir? Uh, that's not the, that's not the format. Format. Oh, at the end. Okay. I have another question. Um, you indicated several times that the total occupancy will not change from 1043. Well, I don't think it is that clear. Uh, we are talking about an additional 400 and some odd people. Can you imagine what an additional 400 or people or more in that same space is going to do to the neighborhood directly outside of it? Not everybody is going to, in my opinion, not everybody is going to squeeze down to the 600-person 
basement, people are going to be mostly upstairs, or a lot of people will be gravitating towards upstairs and out on the streets whenever possible. Um, the one question I did have, and I'm not sure the exact number, but when the approval was made for the Mexican Cantina, and part of the approval was to reduce the number of seats at the bar, I believe it was to reduce the number of seats to, it was under 20, was it 12 or 16, a number like that? Well, whatever, uh, I'm sure it's under 20. Um, counting the seats in the new chart, I came up with 32 stools at the new bar. Now, obviously that's not really something that's been put in place to be able to sell more boar or more pigs or anything else, is to sell more liquor. The more people that you can get at a bar, and I'm not a restaurateur, but I do have common sense, and I think anybody might agree with me that the more people you can get to the bar, the more alcohol, alcohol you're gonna sell, is really what's trying to be uh, passed here. And I don't agree that having that many more seats, moving as many people to get as many drinks as possible, especially on that ground floor, is going to be beneficial to the town. Another thing I wanted to mention, and this was really a sad, uh, a sad instance, um, a few weeks ago, my wife and I attended uh, a Happy Together concert. Uh, it's probably a misnomer, but not everybody was happy there, and it wasn't much of a concert, but still, it was at the Mayo, and we enjoyed it. Um, during, the, during the acts going from one to the other, towards the end, the turtles, or what's left of them, there's, uh, there's two turtles actually that crawled up on stage slowly, um, and they started talking before they started, and they said, we're so glad to be here in Marstown. And I'll quote to you, they said, after all, Marstown is famous for having more bars within a quarter mile strip than anywhere else in New Jersey. And the applause broke out, and my wife and I sit there, sat there, and very sad about it. And this is what the town is is really becoming to be known as. Um, it's the place that people go instead of going to Hoboken. It's known, and nobody can deny it if they've spoken to anybody. It's not known as a bar town, and really getting more and more famous for that, unfortunately. So I beg the council um, to uh, to stick to your guns and to make sure that um, we're voting on things uh, for the benefit of the community, for the benefit of Morristown, and something that will help the town grow with a positive reputation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ginsburg. Mr. Williams has no questions for you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sergio Birani. Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Would you um, please spell, state your first name, uh, spell your first name, and spell your last name, uh, and give your address for the record? Sergio Borani, B U R A N I, 32 D Hard Street. Uh, you have five minutes, sir. Okay, I will not need five minutes. It's like difficult to be the last one. We've already heard it. I, I, I think, we, I think we, have, we may have one more after you. Okay, I don't need to repeat uh, everything that has been said. What I would like to state very clearly is that we have, that I proposed to this proposal, and that the council has an opportunity to make very wise decisions to make against this proposal. And there are, the reasons are basically three, as far as I'm concerned. One of them, the council should show concern for the quality of life in Morristown, which is really, it's being attacked, it's being challenged. Two, the council has the opportunity to, to be consistent with past decisions that have been made and have been made after a thorough review. Last but not least, three, the council has an opportunity to show respect for real jazz as a form of art not as an excuse to get intoxicated. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. W were you aware that the office was approved oh. approximately? Oh. I was not. You were not, you were not aware of it. I, I, no. I'd ask, so I, I, oh, this is 
split second left, I'm just Williams. Um, I'd ask the audience, uh, the people here, to give respect to the uh, to the speaker and to the speaker's attorney and to the applicant's attorney, so that we can conduct the hearing, we can get it recorded, and we can have a record. So, Mr. Williams, if you want to ask the question, I didn't hear the question. He was not aware of the. You were not aware of the office no, application. Um, the board approved an expansion to the office which doubled their seating capacity and they're allowed to stay open at 2 a.m. So would you ask the board to be consistent with what the neighbor directly adjacent to the iron bar did? Have the same closing hours? I'm asking the board to be consistent with the decisions made a year ago on, uh, on the Doha Street establishment. Why would you not want it to be consistent with the neighbor directly adjacent to the iron bar? because the time has come to put an end to this madness. Are you aware that the DeHart expansion proposed a new building and the Iron Bar does not propose a new building? Yes, I am. And that space will exist whether or not this board approves it or not? There'll still be the same space there? I'm aware of that. And are you aware that the same amount of people will go to the Iron Bar whether or not this board approves the expansion? Yes, we've heard that over and over again, but I'm still opposed to the project for the reasons that have been expressed by so many people and that I've expressed myself. So in summation, you're, you would prefer to have 1,043 remain in the existing iron bar developed space? It's a hard choice. If I, if I could set the clock back in time, I, I would oppose the, I would have opposed the iron bar to start with. Well, you can't do that. I know that, okay. unfortunately. So would you agree with me that it would be better for the area to have the 1,043 over the two um, entities, the iron bar and the iron bistro, rather than having them all in the iron bar? I would not agree with you. No. I would prefer to have a jazz place, a real jazz place, not a drinking establishment. That's what you I would You would prefer, prefer the jazz that. place without any liquor? No, with liquor. With liquor. With, with uh, decent opening hours like jazz places have and have proven to be successful. Thank you. Okay? Thank you, sir. Um, I think that was the last person, but we had a, we missed a person and we were gonna give him an opportunity to, we rolled back through. Was uh, Joseph Lee? Mr. Lee here, Joseph Lee. Oh, who, who was the person Matt? Lay. Lay? Oh. No. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, LaQuinn Lay. That was the individual. Was this LaQuinn Lay, L A Y? I don't I don't see Mr. Lay. Okay, so uh, with that we're gonna close uh, the public portion.
June 26, 2013, a special meeting of the Morristown Redevelopment Agency because I plan to make reference to the approval of the Jockey Howell Bar and Kitchen. I also would like to mark in as A6 the minutes from the uh, July 16th council meeting, the resolution uh, as A7. What year was that? 2013. They are the uh, minutes from the uh, approval for the office. Um, I also would like to mark in the resolution. I'd like to mark in as A8 the resolution of the Morristown Planning Board approving the approval for the um, yeah. Well, I have to do it. He's got it. I've got one. I've got copies. I will give it to you. I'd also like to mark in as A9, our floor plan. Um, A10, the rendering, which is on the back side. And at your discretion, you received an email from the resident of Bell Mansion. I would mark it A11. Or can give it the weight that seems appropriate. Okay, so um, let's do this. Let's take our break. Um, we'll mark the exhibits. And we'll, convene, we'll reconvene in five minutes. How about ten minutes? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Council, I'd also like, if we're going to do that, I'd like to have the um, floor plan prior to the approval um, for the expansion for the uh, office so that you can see what you actually approved. The old one that they had and the new one. And quite honestly, I want you to know that we are in favor of what you did. Uh, we did the right thing. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to have that. To be quite honest, you Mark here, I don't know if we can keep that in, 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 in the office, but we'll, 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 oh, do we do have it? Yeah, we should. Okay. Prior. Okay. Office, right. the, the floor plan for the office. Yes, it's, it's, yeah, it's a drawing that's for license price. Okay. All right, so let, let, let's take a break. Let, let's let's get our documents marked together, and then we'll come back and sit back. Thank you. Morristown Green.